This is Jack Jackson again, and we're back with proving some properties of limits. In this video, we're going to prove that the limit of a quotient is a quotient of limits. First, we're going to prove that the limit of a reciprocal is the uh, reciprocal of the limit. So let's start with that. That's property 5. So suppose we are given any epsilon greater than 0, and we're given that the limit of g of x equals m, as x approaches c, and that's m is not 0. So for that, notice that epsilon 1, which is the absolute value of m divided by 2, that's a positive number. So by the definition of limit, there exists a corresponding delta 1 for this epsilon 1, such that if x minus c and absolute value is between 0 and delta 1, then g of x minus m absolute value is less than epsilon. But remember that epsilon 1 is uh, absolute value of m over 2. Now if this is the case, we've got uh, absolute value of m is absolute value of m minus g of x plus g of x, which can be broken up with the triangle inequality as being less than or equal to the absolute value of m minus g of x plus g of x absolute value. Now the absolute value of m minus g of x is the absolute value of g of x minus m. In general, the absolute value of a minus b is the same as the absolute value of b minus a. Actually, their a minus b and b minus a are the same size, the same absolute value, but they're just opposite signs. One will be positive, the other will be negative. Okay, but they have the same absolute value. Now this g minus m absolute value we just showed is less than our epsilon 1, which is absolute value of m over 2. So what do we have? We have absolute value of m is less than absolute value of m over 2 plus g of x, absolute value. Now we have absolute value of m here and here, so we're going to kind of get that together. I'm going to subtract absolute value of m over 2 for both sides. So you've got 1 absolute value of m minus a half absolute value of m is back to a positive 1 half absolute value of m on this side, and it's just less than g of x absolute value on the right side. So, um, Multi so reciprocals will be in the opposite direction. 1 over g of absolute value of g of x is less than 2 over absolute value of m. Or another way to say this is multiply both sides by 2 over absolute value of m, and then multiply both sides by 1 over absolute value of g of x since everything's positive. If you think of it that way, all the inequalities stay the same direction, and you get the expression that we have here. Next, I want to do an epsilon 2 which is m squared over 2 times epsilon, the original epsilon. Notice that's a positive number, since squaring makes it positive. And, uh, and remember, remember, this is strictly positive because m is not 0. Right? So this can't be even 0. It's got to be positive. So for that epsilon 2, there exists a corresponding delta 2, <clears throat> so that g of x minus m in absolute value is less than that epsilon 2 when the x minus c in absolute value is between 0 and delta 2. Of course, that epsilon 2 is m squared over 2 times our original epsilon. Now, what we want for our delta, we started with our epsilon up over here. We were generating two other deltas, a delta 1 and a delta 2. And what we want delta to be is the minimum of delta 1 and delta 2. Now, suppose that x minus c absolute value is between 0 and delta. That means it's less than delta 1 and delta 2. So both of these conclusions that we have here, this inequality is true, and uh, let's see, that one there is the one we get, and also this inequality right here is true. So we have these two inequalities. 1 over absolute value of g of x is less than 2 over absolute value of m, and the absolute value of g of x minus m is less than uh, m squared over 2 times original epsilon. So... Uh, for any x's that are where we want them between, you know, absolute value of x minus c is between 0 and delta, they're close to c, sufficiently close there, then we, we see we have these two statements, so we can put this together. So what we want to look at is we want to show that 1 over g of x, the limit is 1 over m. Remember, m is the limit of g. Well, if that's the case, we want to show that this absolute value is small. How small? Well, less than epsilon. Now we do a little multiplication, a little manipulation here. This 1 over g of x, we multiply the numerator and denominator by m. And the other one, we multiply the numerator and denominator by g so that we can get a common denominator and add them together to get one fraction here. Now, absolute value of a over b is absolute value of a over b, and absolute value of a times b is absolute value of a times absolute value of b. That allows us to take this absolute value top and bottom 
and the bottom do the product of absolute values. So we're down, down to this point right here now. Now what we can do is think of this as a product of three things. The absolute value of m minus g, 1 over the absolute value of m, and 1 over absolute value of g of x. Now let's see what we've got. Uh, one, uh, well, let's see here. One over absolute value of g of x. We already said that was two over absolute value of m. So I can replace that by two over absolute value of m, strictly less than. And this m minus g of x is less than m squared over two times epsilon. That was what we had right here. And we didn't do anything with this one in the middle. Now, absolute value of m times absolute value of m is m squared, which cancels with that m squared. That 2 cancels with that 2. And the only thing left standing when you multiply it all out is epsilon. And so we showed that our original thing here of, of 1 over g of x minus 1 over m, absolute value is less than epsilon. And that's what we need to say that by definition limit, the limit as x approaches c of 1 over g of x is 1 over m which is 1 over the limit as x approaches c of g of x. Now we're going to use this result to prove the next one without having to mention any epsilons or deltas. Okay, So we're given that the limit as x approaches c of f of x is l, and the limit as x approaches c of g of x is m, but m is not 0. So we have a limit of the quotient f of x over g of x. We will think of that quotient as a product. It's a product of f of x and 1 over g of x. So our property 4 that we proved in our just our previous video says that the limit of the products of product limits provided these two limits exist. But we know this first limit exists it's by hypothesis it's L and we know the second one exists by property 5 that we just proved that it's 1 over M and of course when you multiply these you get L over M. So this is a valid proof of that. So the limit of the quotient is the quotient of the limits. So we are able to prove several properties of, of uh, limits there. We'll go on to prove that the limit of power is the power of the limits in the next video.